Now, you'll also notice that your Amazon main channel has two sections of settings, the options which uh, we just finished dealing with and uh, the next one which is your Amazon main XML mapping. XML mapping is what creates a direct link between fields in Shurdan and its intended fields in Amazon. This takes a little work but it actually makes your Amazon um, listings through Shurdan extremely flexible. Uh, so what you want to do is uh, for handling XML mapping is you want to decide what types of products you're going to be using Shurdan to list on Amazon. Uh, and then you're going to need to be able to go ahead and find your product details. So let's go in and talk a little bit about XML mapping. First, you're going to be using it to set your universal fields and general settings. One thing that's sort of unique to Amazon is that items are listed by a top level category such as clothing or books, toys, for example. And then those top level categories are broken into subcategories. And then, of course, they are also qualified by product types. So inside um, particular product types, you will have required or recommended product details, such as the minimum manufacturer's age um, that was required for the Rubik's Cube we were discussing. These, of course, can be found in the inventory template files, uh, may require the creation of custom fields, and this is going to need to be done for every product type that you're listing with. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to uh, identify the product types that you're using, figure out what are your required or recommended product details using the inventory template files, and then show you how to create the custom fields that you'll need and map those back to Shurda. Uh, so we're going to be using, of course, this, um, this Rubik's Cube example uh, that we that we were showing you before, and as I as I had mentioned, this manufacturer's uh, recommended age is going to be what's important here. So to be able to figure out what is required, you are going to want to use the inventory file templates provided by Amazon. You can find these under the help topics uh, for selling on Amazon. They are um, in the volume listing tools under inventory file templates. And as you scroll down, you'll find um, some basic instructions for how to use these. It's important to remember that Amazon created these for an entirely different purpose. Uh, so some of the information that you'll find in these templates doesn't apply to your use of them for sure done. But we will highlight where to find the information that you need from these files. All right, so you'll see here under templates, we have uh, lots of different categories. We're going to be using the non-media categories for our example. You'll notice that there are light templates on the left and inventory templates uh, in the middle. The inventory templates are the full version, which gives you all of the possible fields. Um, the light templates only give you the essential fields, so try and decide which one you want before uh, you download. And of course, we're going to be using the toys and games file to figure out what we need to list our Rubik's Cube. Keep in mind that if you have any questions while we're going through this material in the webinar, don't hesitate to let those in the Q&A box. So we have already downloaded this file, so let us take you in and show you what it looks like. You can read the instructions if you need to, um, but you're primarily going to be focusing on the data definitions tab and the valid values tabs. So under the data definitions, there are going to be some basic fields. As you can see, there's the field name that Amazon uses, and then a local label name, which is basically the general description of what that field is called. And on the right-hand side, you'll see whether or not it's required. So, of course, you're going to need a SKU that's going to be required. You're going to need some sort of product ID, such as an ASIN or a, a UPC. You're going to need to tell it what type of product ID that is. Um, you're going to need a keyword, a product name, a brand, and a manufacturer. So all of that is pretty standard, and we already knew that we need those for Amazon listings. So as you go down, you'll see a section on offers, all of which seem to be optional in this case. All of the dimensions things are optional in this case. The discovery is optional, uh, with the exception of some target keywords for your audience. Images, of course, are going to be optional because we're listing to something that already exists. All of our fulfillment is optional. Compliance seems to be optional. 
And now we will break out into types of products. So we're not listing for apparel, we can scroll down. We are listing to toys and games. All right, so what you'll see is there are two fields here that are required, a minimum manufacturer's age. This is the minimum age at which it's recommended that someone play with this toy. And we're also going to need a minimum unit of measure. So we need to tell it whether we are looking at this in terms of months, which you would use, of course, for infants or very, very young children. Or uh, in this case, uh, we're going to be using years. So those are the only two things that are going to be required for this particular type of product. So now we want to go in, now that we have an idea of what product details we need, then we are going to go ahead and um, go into our shirt on XML settings and start mapping these product details. So the first step, of course, is we're gonna wanna scroll down to the product type that we're using. In this case, we wanna do toys. And now we are going to control F to find the, um, the field that we're looking for. So here, of course, you'll see the minimum manufacturer's age that's recommended. So uh, we don't have a field yet here for mapping this. Uh, so we're gonna wanna create one. So how do we do that? So we're gonna exit out of this and then we're gonna go back up to the gear here and click on advanced. Um, and we're gonna add a custom user field. Custom user fields allow you to add any field that you might need. So in this case, we're gonna create a minimum manufacturer's age. And we can leave this as a, a variable character or a var car if you like that defaults, but we can actually also add a data check. So in this case, I'm only gonna be adding integer values. So I can go ahead and select the integer value um, as a, a type of data that we're going to be expecting. And then of course we can turn displayed off. Uh, displayed indicates whether or not you want this displayed on your eBay and storefront listings, which of course, uh, this is an Amazon specific field and we do not want to display them. So we'll just turn that off and then go ahead and click saved settings. That will go ahead and create our custom user field. As you can see, we were successful. Now we can go back to our channel settings, open up our XML mapping, go back to our toys. And of course, once again, we'll just find control F our minimum age. And now we can create, now that we've created our, our maxim, our field here, we can go ahead and select that. So now we've added our minimum manufacturer's age. And if we wanted to override this and put months in instead as the other valid value, then we certainly could do that. But since we've added the field that we are looking for, uh, then we can just go ahead and hit saved settings here. So that is all we're gonna do. And that is what we would need to do uh, for mapping the necessary product details uh, for this particular type of product. And once again, of course, you're gonna need to go through these flat files and make sure that you have found all of the required fields um, for your specific type of, um, for your specific type of uh, item and make sure you map all of those in your XML mapping. All right, so that is all we would need to do.